Well, welcome to the EV3 tutorial. In this first lesson, we're just going to do the very, very essentials, just what you need in order to get in and write your first program. So let's get started. The EV3 is really a system. It's not just one particular piece. We think of the EV3 sometimes as the computer module. That's it here on the top of this model. But there's really a lot more to it than that. There's also motors. There's two motors on this model. One's over here and one's on the other side. And these are obviously what makes the robot move, but you can use them for a lot of different things. This particular model also has a couple of sensors. It has a sensor here for measuring light and has a sensor here that's a touch sensor. You can tell if it runs into something. Let's look at the motor in a little bit more detail. The motor is actually back in here and it turns very quickly and that speed would be way too fast for our robot. It wouldn't have any power and it would make the robot run way too fast if it did. So instead it's geared down through a set of gears that are off in here and the part that actually turns is this red part. You can put an axle through the middle, you can pin things to the side. There's a lot of different flexible you know, options there. The back part of the motor is where you plug in a wire that plugs into the EV3 itself. And that uh, kind of looks like a telephone cord, but it's special just for LEGO. There's also a smaller cousin to the large motor, coincidentally called the medium motor. And uh, it, again, takes a plug in the back. And this is a little red part in the front here turns. So you can put an axle in there and um, turn other things. There's a whole array of sensors that you can get for the EV3. Some of these may have come in your kit, and some of them you might have to buy separately. Everybody gets touch sensors, though. These are very simple switches that portion is pushed, then the EV3 can sense that and know to do something. There's uh, color and light sensors. They can sense color, so there's an array of different colors that they can sense red, green, blue, and so on. Or they can sense just light intensity, how bright the light is that it sees. There's a distance sensor. This is ultrasonic, so it works kind of like a bat. It puts out a high frequency chirp up through one of these sides. It goes out, bounces off of something, goes back and is received by the microphone on the other side. And by measuring how long it took for that sound to come out, hit something and come back, the EV3 can tell how far away something is. The gyro is a new sensor for uh, LEGO, and it can sense tilt. So you see these arrows here. As the sensor is rotated, the EV3 can sense that and make decisions about it. You uh, might see this on LEGO models where the model will balance on two wheels. Not in the educational set, but certainly in the retail set, is the infrared sensor. This sensor can measure what angle the beacon is at. You can also send commands from the beacon to the infrared sensor to um, be able to tell your robot go forward, backwards, you know, turn, and whatever, without having to write programs for it. Let's look at the EV3 computer module in a little bit more detail has a series of buttons down here in the bottom. That, that, those are navigation buttons, you know, up, down, left, right. The middle is a select key, so that's how you say OK or Enter, like you would on a computer. This uh, button over here is the back key, kind of like the back key on a browser. It will back you up one level. It will also cancel certain operations. That's, that's also how you would shut it off. On the side of the EV3 are a couple of expansion uh, possibilities. One is a USB plug. This isn't where you would plug in your computer to program the EV3, but it does allow one EV3 to be a master and then have a bunch of zombie EV3s that it's controlling in order to get more motor and sensor ports. So if you ever want to build a really, really huge model that needs more than uh, the number of motors and sensors that you can plug into an EV3, then that's how you can do it. The top portion of the EV3, that's this portion up here, is uh, where you plug in your motors. So you have four motor ports here. That's an expansion over the NXT that only had three. 
It also has the plug, it's a um, small USB plug that you can then plug into your computer. That's how you would program your computer most of the time, especially in a school environment. You can also do it over Bluetooth and such. In a school environment, that tends to be more trouble than it's worth. The bottom part of the EV3 computer module is where your sensors plug in. So we talked about the sensors in the previous slide, so light sensors, touch sensors, and so on would all plug into the bottom here. Now let's talk about how you'd write and run a program. First you're going to look for an icon that looks like this, that is, maybe it's on your desktop, maybe it's in your uh, ribbon along the bottom, maybe it's in your run menu, wherever it is. This is the icon your editor. When you launch the EV3 software, you'll end up at this main screen. This is called the lobby. And there's a lot of different things over here on the left. We're not going to talk about the top three. You can explore those on your own at some point. Most of what you'll do will be in the file area. This is where you open an existing project or start a new project. The other thing to know about is the robot educator. This is like an online manual for the whole EV3 programming language. And it's a great resource for things that maybe I didn't explain very well or that you want to go deeper on. Go back here to File. If you want to open a project that you've already written, then you'll say Open Project. You'll say Open and open it. And then here's all the projects that uh, I have on my hard drive. In our case, we're going to make a new project. Uh, everything on the EV3 is made up of projects and programs, or projects and experiments. You'll see this experiment thing show up sometimes on the educational version of the software. We're not going to talk about it much, but if you want to do, use the EV3 to collect data for science experiments um, in science class or something, this would be a place where you could do that. So again, everything we do is going to be a project, it's going to be a program, and we're going to make a new uh, program. So we'll say open. This gets us to the main editor. Now, the uh, content uh, editor will show up here, and your teacher might have put other material here, in which case he or she will tell you uh, what to do with it. But for our purposes, we're just going to close that. That gives us a lot more screen real estate to deal with. The, um, the blocks that you use in your program are split up into a bunch of different categories down here. And they get progressively more advanced as you move uh, up the colors. We're going to stay on green. And in particular, we're just going to use one block. That's the move steering block. This is the block that you'll use pretty much all the time whenever you want your robot to move. So we're going to click, hold that button down, the left mouse button and drag it up here into place. Now blocks have modes and that's what this first tab is about. And so we'll go ahead and click on that. And that tells the block kind of grossly what it's going to be doing. If you wanted to have the robot stop, then you'd say off. If you want to turn on the motors but then go on to the next block after it, then you'd say on. Um, the rest of these are kind of the same idea. On for seconds just turns on for a certain amount of time. On for degrees turns on for a certain um, number of degrees turns of the wheel. And on for rotations turns on for a certain number of rotations of the wheel. So the bottom two are pretty much the same thing. It's just that this one's 360 times bigger than this one. One rotation is equal to 360 degrees. I usually use on for degrees for most things because it's, you know, the most accurate and it's kind of the way my brain works, but you can do on for rotations if you want to. Then when you've selected the mode, then you have a set of parameters. These parameters are going to change depending on what your mode is. So for example, if I say off, well, there aren't too many parameters for off because you know, off means off. But when we say on for degrees, then the EV3 language wants to know exactly what that means. So uh, the first uh, parameter here is the amount of the turning. So if you slide the slider all the way to one side, 
Then it tells the EV3 robot to turn as sharply as it possibly can. That usually means make one motor go forward and one go backwards. As you back up here, it's going to start moderating that a little bit. And around 50, it'll, it'll stop one motor and make the other one go. And um, then as we do other things, it'll make one motor go slower than another. So we're just going to go straight for right now. The next parameter controls um, how, how much power to use while you're doing this. So if you drag this all the way to the top, then that means it's going to go full speed. And if you drag it all the way to the bottom, it's going to go backwards full speed. You'll notice how this arrow changed around to pointing backwards when I did that. And as you go somewhere in the middle, then um, it'll be somewhere less than full speed. Now here's a big warning. Don't ever put it in the middle. Because what that means is don't give it any power. But it's still expecting to go for this next parameter, which is 360 um, degrees. And it'll never get done. Because uh, zero power means the motor's never going to turn. But it's still trying to 360. And the end result is the block will just hang up your program and never advance past that block. So let's go ahead and give it some power. Anything above about 20 or so is probably fine. Then the next one is uh, how, how long to do this. In the case of moving by degrees, it's how many degrees for the axle to turn before we go on to the next block. 360 being one complete rotation. If we said 500, then it's you know more than one complete rotation. And the last block is whether you want to break or coast at the end. Uh, break um, is what you'll do most of the time. The robot comes to as quick a stop as it can. Coast, it'll sort of coast to, a, to an end. The other thing that you can set is what ports the motors are plugged into. B is um, you know, one of the most common, and C is the other most common. So the block's going to default to that. You could change it to other blocks, but there's really not too much reason. If you're building a robot that's made to drive around, may as well just stick with B and C, because that's what this move block is always going to default to every time you bring it out. So, uh, we have a block here. It's going to go for degrees. It's going to go straight. It's going to go for power of 48. It's going to go for 500 degrees, turns of the axle. And it's going to break when it gets to the end. And you can drag more blocks up here and have them do something else. You will have it turn at the end here. So when the time comes for you to write your own program, this is all you need to do right now is just drag these move steering blocks and put them up here. And uh, you, can, you can string as many of them together as you want. All right, so now we have our program, but we're not quite done yet because we need to name it. We need to name two things. We need to name the program and the project that it's a part of. Naming the program is easy. You just go on up here, and um, we'll call this test program. That's really not a very good name. What you'd like to do is have a name that describes better what uh, this program does. But we're lazy for now. Now, it's part of a project that's right now called project. And that's not uh, very descriptive. And in a school environment, you probably would like to have the projects um, called your, you know, something to do with your name so that you can keep track of whose program is what on the robot. And uh, you would think you would double click here, but no. You go on up to File, and you have to save the project. So we'll do a Save As. And oh, we'll call it My Project, since we're being not very descriptive about our names today. And now we say save, and uh, I already have one of those, but I just replaced it. And so now we have a project called My Project. There's a little wrench over here that you can click on, and you can see all the different um, uh, programs that are a part of this project. We just have one right now. This project title doesn't have anything to do with the name of the project. It's just for your own use. You can add lots of other materials here, and we'll get back to this one later um, because you'll get back to uh, writing more and more advanced programs. But for now, we'll just go back over here to test project. So let's take a look at uh, what we have to do on the EV3 in order to 
download this. So for the rest of this tutorial, we're going to need a robot. And the robot that I'm using is the standard design from the EV3 educational set. Uh, the plans for this are in the booklet that came with the set. If you have the retail kit, uh, you'll have to chase down uh, other plans for a basic robot. But this is uh, really just a robot with two motors, one on each side, and a touch sensor and a light sensor on the front. So looking at the EV3 itself, to turn it on, you press the button in the middle. And the robot um, will take about 30 seconds to boot. Uh, it's running a full version of Linux, and so it takes a little while. And when uh, you've turned it on, then uh, you'll be to this tabbed screen. And there's four tabs along the top here. The first one is the most recently run programs. And you'll see a list of the programs that have been run most recently. A, that your program is going to show up here, show up here because you haven't run it yet. And so um, let's go ahead and download the program and you'll see what I mean. There's a series of three buttons over here that download the programs. The top one's the one that you always use. And that downloads the program into the robot. The middle one downloads it and runs it, which you very seldom want to do because that ends up with the robot running off the table and crashing into the floor. And the bottom one downloads a piece of your program. You very seldom ever do that. So the top one is the one we're going to use. Usually you'll be uh, running these um, programs and downloading them from your computer using a USB cable. And so you go ahead and plug that in. I happen to have mine hooked up with Bluetooth right now because I'm out of USB ports. But um, yours will look basically the same, except there will be a little box here that, under the USB. So we'll go ahead and download it. And you hear the happy little sound. That means that our program's ready to go back at our robot. Now, it stays on whatever tab you were on last. So if you just recently turned on your EV3, it'll probably be on this tab. Your program hasn't been run, so it doesn't show up here on this tab. We need to go over to this next tab, so we'll press the right key. Now we're over here on the, uh, the right tab. And sure enough, here's the project that we just downloaded. We'll go ahead and open that, so I'll press the enter key. And here's our program. So we want to run that program. So we'll press the enter key, and uh, away it'll go. And when it gets done, it'll be back on that, that program. Now, because we've run it, it'll be over here also on most recently run. But if you make any changes to that program, if you edit even the smallest thing on it, it'll disappear off of this menu. And you'll wonder, what the heck happened to it? Well, they're always over here under this tab. In some ways, it's almost best to ignore this first tab of most, most recently run until you have some programs that are really well debugged and you're not changing all the time because they'll sometimes they'll be there and sometimes they won't. So now it's your turn. 